Hello everyone. Today we will explore the vast beauty of the sugarcane fields, where the journey begins for one of the essential ingredients found in every kitchen around the world. Cane sugar. Cane sugar, with its familiar sweet flavor, has become an inseparable part of our daily lives, adding sweetness to countless beloved dishes. First, let's explore how farmers grow sugarcane. There are two methods for planting sugarcane. The simple and popular method is to select healthy sugarcane stalks and place them deep into the ground so they can absorb natural sunlight, wind, and nutrients. Today, with the help of modern machinery, this task has become faster and more efficient, allowing farmers to save labor while still ensuring the natural growth of the sugarcane plants. The second method is to use young sugarcane plants that have been carefully germinated in nurseries. Although the cost is higher, this method provides peace of mind by ensuring a high survival rate and uniform growth across the entire sugarcane field, outperforming the traditional method. Under the dedicated care of the farmers, the sugarcane plants grow day by day. From planting until they are ready for harvest season, sugarcane needs about 10 to 15 months to gather enough strength from the earth and sky. When the harvest season arrives, modern machinery is brought into the sugarcane fields, helping farmers harvest more quickly and efficiently. The huge machine gently sweeps up the sugarcane stalks and uses its power to lift them from the ground. Part of the leaves is separated by the machine and returned to the soil to retain moisture and keep the soil loose for future crops. A truck moves alongside, responsible for transporting the pre-processed sugarcane preparing it for the journey to the factory for processing. After that, the sugar cane is transported to the factory to prepare for the processing into raw sugar. The sugarcane is transferred into large collection hoppers, ready for the first step of the pressing process. From here, the sugarcane is fed into shredders to be chopped into smaller pieces, making the juice extraction easier and more efficient. The sugarcane juice from each farm is sampled separately and analyzed in the on-site laboratory to determine the sugar content, known as CCS. The remaining fiber from the sugarcane, called bagasse, is used as fuel for the boilers, generating steam and electricity to power the factory's operations and reducing waste released into the environment. The extracted sugarcane juice is heated and pumped into a large tank called a clarifier. Here, dirt and other impurities settle and are removed. The clarified juice is then transferred to evaporators, where it is boiled in a vacuum environment until it thickens to a consistency like golden syrup. From here, the liquid is pumped into a device called a pan, where it is further concentrated by boiling in a vacuum environment. This is also the stage where the syrup is seeded with small sugar crystals, a process known as crystallization. When the crystals reach a size of about 1 mm, the thick syrup and sugar crystal mixture, known as massaquite, is discharged. The massacuit is transferred to a centrifuge, where it is spun at very high speeds to separate the molasses from the sugar crystals. The raw sugar then passes through a dryer, where it is dried before being temporarily stored on site in dedicated warehouses. After that, these mountains of raw sugar are ready to be exported to markets around the world.
and that sugar is not yet refined sugar. Right now, let's head to the factory to continue the journey of making the type of sugar you commonly use in your kitchen. Refined sugar begins with raw sugar that does not meet food grade standards, which is transported by trucks and poured into an automatic hopper connected to a conveyor belt with a storage capacity of up to 1,000 tons. The raw sugar is fed into the refinery at a rate of 55 to 60 tons per hour. The refining process begins when the raw sugar is mixed with a concentrated hot syrup called a raw wash. This mixture is known as magma and is carefully controlled for consistency before being fed into a centrifuge where it spins at over 1,000 revolutions per minute. As the sugar crystals spin at high speed, the sugar and syrup separate. To aid this process, hot water is sprayed onto the magma, forcing the syrup and impurities through small holes in the filter screen. The result is fine raw sugar crystals. An added benefit of this process is the removal of around 30% of the color from the original raw sugar crystal. The affined raw sugar is dissolved in hot water at 80 degrees to form melter liquor. The sugar content of this liquor is about 65%. The liquor is then passed through a coarse screen to remove large particulate matter. The next step is the clarification process known as phosphatation. This is where lime and food grade phosphoric acid are added to the melter liquor. Fine bubbles of air are introduced along with a flocculant. This helps bind the impurities together and float them to the surface of the clarifier vessel. This floating layer is known as scum. Once it's removed, we are left with clarified liquor. The clarifying stage is critical in the refining process as it's where most of the impurities are removed from the liquor stream. The next stage involves the clarified liquor being heated further, then put through sand and gravel filters before being sent to the activated carbon columns. The activated carbon columns are where the majority of color is removed from the liquor. The carbon works much like a fish tank filter it removes organic and other residual material, resulting in a further 85% color removal. Liquor color is one of many parameters closely monitored by the refinery lab staff. Based on lab results, small adjustments are made to factory parameters to ensure the refinery produces a consistent, quality product that is always in spec. Once the liquor has passed through the carbon columns, it is known as fine liquor Excess water is then removed from the liquor by passing it through a triple effect evaporator. This concentrates the liquor from 65% sugar content to 78% sugar content in an energy efficient way. From here, the liquor is moved to vacuum pans, where it is seeded with CSR caster sugar to grow the sugar crystals. This automated process produces batches of sugar crystals that are consistently the desired size. The thick sugar syrup mix, known as Massacuit, now moves to the final centrifuge, where it is spun at speeds in excess of 1,000 revolutions per minute. The refined fugles remove the syrup from the mix. The amount of wash water added to the mix during the spin cycle will dictate the final color of the sugar crystals. The syrup is either returned to the pans to grow more sugar or is used to make CSR branded raw sugar, castor raw sugar, coffee sugar, or demerara sugar. The food grade sugar manufacturing process is almost complete. The sugar crystals are now sent to a large rotary dryer where warm dry air is used to remove excess moisture. The dried sugar is then air conditioned and dehumidified in a 3000 ton conditioning silo. The final product remains in the silo for 24 to 36 hours before being transported and packaged. And so, the final packaging stage is complete bringing these sweet products from the vast sugarcane fields to kitchens and households around the world. Our journey exploring lush green fields and massive processing factories comes to a close here. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and follow our channel so you won't miss our upcoming exciting videos.